Good evening, Sam. I'm glad you've decided to join us for the interview. Uh, it really is a joy to speak with you about matters concerning New Project 2, and I expect later on Section 230. So first of all, would you like to just tell us a bit about yourself, your background and your legal training there? Sure. So I'm a um, company director. I'm dual qualified in IT and law. So I um, own a small software development company. And I've also done a master's degree in law with what we call the legal practice course here in the UK, which is the attorneys or solicitors exams. Now, I haven't taken that further. I haven't become an attorney, but I have 10 years experience helping people in court as something called a McKenzie friend. And as a McKenzie friend, you can give legal advice and you can help people with their papers. And sometimes I've been allowed to speak on their behalf and cross-examine witnesses, which is discretionary. Um, on the judge's behalf. But as I said, I've passed my law exams, I've got a master's degree in law and 10 years experience of, of litigation basically here. So you're kind of like, uh, in Canada, we call it like a paralegal, like you're able to do stuff like they're able to do kind of? Um, not quite like that, but I mean, you can look it up if you want. But yeah, yeah. Um, basically, um, I help a lot of people in court. It sounds like great work you're doing there, absolutely sterling work. Uh, and so Sam, on the matter at hand, new project too. What did you think when you cast your own eyes and your own experience that you've just outlined there onto New Project 2, onto that website? What were your initial impressions of New Project 2, sir? So the first thing that I noticed, um, it's actually what um, Leo used in his video, the, the terms. Now, one of the ways I, I earn money here is that um, I do compliance work with financial institutions. And so... Not so long ago, I was overdoing some software for a company that helps big banks comply. And they have like books of compliance rules and terms and, you know, vetting processes for clients. And Dick hadn't sorted any of that up. He basically seems to have used a single merchant account and set up this um, this payment processor. And, you know, as, as Leo pointed out, there's just like this paragraph of terms saying, you know, terms don't mean anything. Um, so straight away, you've got kind of enormous hole where all his compliance should be before we even get into the, to the substance of what's um, on some of the websites he's been supporting. In your own opinion there, Sam, do you think that Dick Masterson saying in his terms of service that they don't mean anything, do you think that's legal? Um, certainly wouldn't be here in the UK because we have this thing called the Financial Conduct Authority, which regulates everyone and requires them all to have, you know, policies and things. Well, I was going to say that the website name, is, he thinks it's kind of like a joke, right? Even the website name, New Project 2, Terms of Service, they don't mean anything. Uh, would jokes like that really hold up in a court of law? No. Okay. I, I, I don't know what to say. We have here, I mean, you know, really strict regulation. If you want to run like a bank or something, you have to be a a fit and proper person recognized by the Financial Conduct Authority. And just to be clear, it's nothing to do with left or right. You know, I am, you know, a conservative. I support Boris Johnson. I'm sympathetic to Trump. You know, it's it's nothing to do with, you know, bias or censorship. It's just there's a whole bunch of red tape if you want to run a financial institution. And much of it is to do with stopping crimes and stuff. Nothing to do with, you know, um, left or right. It's, you know, Twitter, I think, you know, there's legitimate criticism there about bias. But, mm. but... All this, this is just like straightforward lack of compliance. Yeah. Absolutely. So do you, in your own opinion, sir, do you believe that Dick Masterson is fully equipped to deal with this financial institution? Do you believe he's fully equipped to be the proprietor of such an institution like New Project 2? I don't think he's got the skills because, you know, you, you must realise that, that with all the laws we have on like money laundering stuff these days, if you try to set up a, a payment processor, you're going to want some significant skills in your business that he doesn't seem to have. Right. Now, I've read your article, Sam, uh, that you published on the 29th of May, I think, a few days ago now. And you say that within that text, uh, New Project 2 LLC was, I, I quote here, hilariously easy to dismantle. Would you like to just share with us the process of how New Project 2 was dismantled? Yeah, so New Project 2 depends on, obviously, credit card processors. And the credit card processors I've dealt with before um, are fairly strict. They won't get involved in politics issues. You know, they won't ban a firm just because it's hurt someone's feeling or because it's left or it's right or whatever. Do you know what I mean? You have to show them illegality. And I've had, you know, an executive there say, look, we're not going to get involved unless it's illegal. But if you can show them illegality, if you can show them a money laundering risk, then they are going to say, no, we're going to close it down. So did you show a money laundering risk on New Project 2? 
it, it, it's difficult now to wear even to begin. I mean, obviously, starting with the, the terms of New Project 2, there's no obvious onboarding process. They're not vetting these people, as far as I can tell. Um, but then, of course, when you look at Josh and, and, of course, Mad at the Internet, which was powered by New Project 2, that was obviously being used to fund illegality. I mean, Josh has made himself the, if you like, one of the international faces of white supremacist terrorism. When Brenton Tarrant shot up a mosque, you know, police said to him, you know, cooperate with us, let us know who's distributing the video. And Josh's response was, no, he's the one distributing the video. And, you know, he doesn't care about the laws. Um, and he, he used some very, very harsh terms, as I'm sure you remember. He was telling, he literally told some police officer in New Zealand, operate, you know, investigating terrorism, I don't care about your faggot laws. That's what Josh said to him. Was your interest in the new project too when you saw that Joshua Moon, you know, owner and proprietor of like Kiwi Farms and Nine Chan was drawing an almost, I think it's nearly two grand a month, a paycheck from that website? Was your interest peaked there? Yeah, that was why I cared. I mean, don't get me wrong, all the other stuff's bad and shady. Yeah, but it would have been someone else's problem if Josh wasn't on there. Right. So just tell us about your prior history with Joshua Moon. Uh, I, I, it's fractious to say the least from what I can gather. Yeah, and it's fairly straightforward. I run a blog, a, a lot like um, uh, Leo. Um, what I do is I expose wrongdoing. A lot of it's the same wrongdoing Leo exposes. And I was looking at a website called Rational Wiki. And at the time, there was a guy on Rational Wiki who was a bit of a pedo apologist. And he was, you know, coming out with this usual rubbish about paedophiles being an oppressed minority. I'm sure you've seen it all. I was doing a, a bit of a hit piece on that. And I encountered this guy called Dynastia. Um, and he was from some place I'd never heard of called the Kiwi Farms. And we initially seemed to get on. But then I wanted to go after the paedophile. And Dynastia just wanted to harass random people about kinks and stuff he'd found out about them that weren't illegal. Like one of them was into being cuckolded. And that's not my cup of tea. But equally, it's not illegal. It's grown adults. I don't care. I wanted to have a go at the person who was, you know, glorifying paedophilia. And then, so we didn't really get on after that. And Dynastia created a thread on me on Kiwi, Kiwi Farms, which is much like all threads, you know, full of um, stalking and lies. And uh, I think at one point, they were even sharing their drafts on bomb threats and kind of mass murder threats. They sent in my name. And um, obviously, that's why we fell out. And I discovered Josh in the Kiwi Farms. And, and uh, our disagreement flowed from there. So within your article, you say that his speech is not legal and his website's not legal. Um, would you like to just clarify with relation to Section 230, how it's not legal and how his speech isn't legal? So let's start off. Simple thing about Section 230 has no effect on criminal law. So, you know, if it's a civil matter like libel, Section 230 might give you defence. If it's something illegal like, say, child pornography, there is no defence. OK, so if it's a crime... If it's, yeah. you know, like so selling just, drugs or something. Yeah, it just opens up Josh to legal liability now where – civil liability now where he can be sued and lose income or have wages garnished in a, yeah. an attempt to collect damages. Whereas now he'd still be criminally responsible if there's anything on the site that's criminal. In your estimation, Sam, is there anything on the site now that you would consider to be criminal? Um, so – I don't know if you're aware of the history, but I've had Josh banned from hosts several times over the years. And one thing they've said that was news to me, for example, about four or five years ago, Gandhi.net, a French host, banned Kiwi Farms, and they specifically said they found child pornography. So I don't know if that's a thread or he's got a hidden forum, but they very specifically said they found significant amounts of child pornography that was illegal under French law. And they canned it and they wouldn't give him his database and he actually lost data. And there's been a couple of others who've banned him on the same basis. Wow. So he's been hosting, he's been hosting child yeah, pornography. Yeah, I've got, got, yeah. got that in writing. So, I mean, I can send you a link. Give me two secs. I'll put it into the chat. Um, mm. Or I can email it around. So, but he 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 has for years denied child pornography, but hosts keep banning him. And eventually... Yeah. He actually had to um, put in place various means to hide the host so we couldn't find out where the host was easily. So he doesn't just use Cloudflare, but he actually um, kind of used his disposable hosts as a front end and they redirect traffic. So it kind of goes through Cloudflare, it goes to a disposable host and then it goes to the web front end. And the database is somewhere else. So um, what you're saying is that he's tolerated child pornography on his site, and when when it's come time to remove it, 
he has gone to further extents to allow child pornography to continue to be posted rather than reporting it to authorities, is what you're saying, yeah? Well, that is why they banned him. I mean, it wasn't, you don't have to take my word for it. Um, it was a, a French firm, and I've just sent you a link with a screenshot of what they said to Josh. Um, yeah. So if you scroll down my article, there's an enormous screenshot from Gandhi.net, and you can see what, what they and Josh discussed. And if you click on it, it will come up full size. So, Sam, in, in the penultimate paragraph of your article, you know, published on the 29th of May, you talk about the terminated merchant filer, a TMF, right? Um, would you just like to elaborate upon how that relates to Josh uh, and, and also Dick Masterson, who are financially re associated with Josh? Yeah, so what it is, is Visa and, and MasterCard have a kind of blacklist of people who've been kicked off the network for breaching their rules. And it's quite hard. You have to basically do illegal stuff, um, certain things to do with consumer rights. But they keep a list. And, you know, if you've been kicked off for child porn or money laundering or terrorism, whatever, you go on the list. And, you know, then you can't come back for at least five years. So what happened was Josh actually had another site um, uh, a few years back. And um, he was running that in his own name. This was before New Project 2, but it was a very similar setup, yeah? Um, you could donate and, and, and give money to the Kiwi farms. And um, that was under his own name. And MasterCard and, um, you know, the others kicked him off because they found, you know, illegal stuff. And there was actually, I think there was some suggestion of um, credit card fraud at the time. I think it was um, a website called lolcow.us. And um, there was some fraudulent transactions. And then we found out about this when Josh was trying to cover up because he was posting on Kiwi Farms saying, someone put massive, massive fraudulent transactions through and it wasn't me. I'm being fitted up, guys, like anyone else would have done thousands of dollars of fraudulent transactions through his website. And, um, yeah, sorry, I found my note of that. That was in 2017. And so that site was banned and he shut it down. So he's on the terminated merger file. Then, obviously, he's gone over to New Project 2. I don't know how much, you know, Dick Masterson understood this. And, again, this comes back to him not having policies or vetting or, you know, knowing it. Because most payment providers would check you, you know, would vet you against the terminated merchants file if you applied to, to go on them. But either Dick Masterson didn't because he didn't know or he decided to ignore it. But anyway, Josh has gone on to that service. And now, of course, you know, Dick Masterson's name will have this terminated merchants file note against it because obviously the service has been terminated because of all the illegal content on Josh's site. So your last paragraph of that article, you, you, you know, you offer a warning to Dick Masterson saying that he's earning 20 grand a month on Patreon and he should start reflecting carefully and urgently on this. So I, I think you even recommend fear, right? But what you're saying about Dick Masterson is that he could likely lose his Patreon earnings by being a terminated merchant. Well, look, if you are linked in the financial system to illegality, yeah, you will find services disappear. You know, your bank account will close and you can't get another one and all sorts of stuff. And, you know, and, and it can come as a shock to people. I've read a lot of horror stories about, you know, students who've maybe accepted a questionable payment and had their bank account shut down without warning, you know. Um, and that's because there's all these money laundering regulations. And again, it's nothing to do with politics or left or right. The banks, if anything, have been a bit trigger happy over the years. And they talk about reforming it now. But if Dick is linked to all the illegality that Josh is linked to, he could certainly be terminated by Patreon. He could lose his credit cards and his checking account, for that matter. Now, Masterson has been terminated prior by Chase Bank, I believe, and other sort of payment providers. With your interaction recently, who was the bank? Who was the person you contacted? I contacted MasterCard because oh, they, right. they actually set the rules that the banks that process credit transactions have to follow. They have rules and Visa has rules and you have to follow the rules if you want to be a bank that processes transactions. And then, you know, down a step from them is like a company like Patreon or New Project 2. So you didn't contact any bank directly? No, what happened was MasterCard contacted the bank and asked the bank to investigate. And then they came back. And as you can see, they said the acquirer, that's the bank, has terminated them. So you're unaware of which bank in particular it was that uh, Dick was Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter because you don't want to be messing about with individual banks. You want him on the central file that's held by the card networks because then it doesn't matter what bank he goes to the bank will go up he'll say can i sign up mr bank they'll go okay let's just do our background check they'll check the terminated merchants file and there it'll be so you know messing about yeah. with individual banks is, you so know. are there any hopes sam about 
maybe a new new project too coming to surface? Is there any well, hope of him redeeming or finding some shred of how to rebuild this again? Dan Josh, because the thing is, the Ralph Retour, all those other guys, whatever you think of them, their content isn't illegal, yeah? You know, um, Ralph isn't distributing terrorist manuals or whatever. Josh is, you know, doing a hell of a lot of illegal things. And, you know, we might want to come back to the child porn in a minute because there's some good evidence there um, about his recent activities. And, um, you know, he's doing some pretty extreme things on Nine chan And um, even the terms appear to allow illegal activity there. Um, and but, but all Dick has to do is get rid of Josh. Now, then he also has to persuade the banks that he is, you know, a fit and proper person. I suspect they'll have questions about, you know, his procedures. But I'm not going to bother with Dick Masterson if he's not hosting Josh. Because how possible. long? How long will Dick Masterson be on that terminated yeah, merchant yeah. file now? Um, I'm not actually sure on the policy. I would suspect at least five years. But I mean, he might be able to go to them and, and kind of grovel and say, "Yeah, we have one bad actor. We've banned them." It depends on how he approaches it. If he insists on trying to prop up Josh, he's going to find things very difficult. If he shows some humble pie and, you know, sorts out his policies and doesn't have Josh, then he may well be able to get back on. And and that's kind of between him and them. So, Sam, I was just curious. So at this point, you're you're certain that that Dax Herrera would have been added to that list of banned merchants because of his association with Josh and Matt. Well, just because he's terminated, it's cool. It's called the terminated merchants file because if you get terminated for breaking the rules, they put you on it with whatever rule you broke and the evidence. Okay, okay, so it's automatically, you know, he's he'd be added to that list and then he'd be on there for five years. So, yeah. so Sam, can I just ask your opinion on what you think about the site still being up and still seeming to accept people donating within the site? There's another worry there, and again, it's a compliance thing. A lot of the rules of the card networks, as I recall, so you're not supposed to store actual card numbers. So I'm not sure how that's working, but I want to, don't want to say too much because I don't know about the inner workings of um, of the sites. But um, I think what you're supposed to do when you're processing card numbers is kind of, as a website, not keep them, but just pass them through to the payment provider. Mm -hmm. So hopefully nothing dodgy is going on there, but we don't know what's going on. When you put your card number into New Project 2, yeah, I have absolutely no idea what happens to it. According well, do you to... think it's still uh, correct business practice to still operate New Project 2 now that Dick Masterson has been terminated as a merchant? Um, I think it's really questionable. Um, and I think, you know, it'd be interesting to see what happens. Um, I suspect it's not, the, um, it's not the worst thing that they've done, though. What do you think the chances would be of New Project 2 being reinstated with the financial service um, without removing Josh as a uh, creator that benefits from it. Do you think it's a 0% chance he'd be able to find an institution that would process the transactions? So if he did find a bank, as soon as it opened up again, we'd have it banned again because you can't have Josh's sites as they are currently on financial networks because they're illegal. So if he found some bank that for some reason you know, didn't check or was willing to accept the risk, then they'd just ban him again. Yeah. And I'd be very surprised if he got that far at this stage. But the the rumor has been, Sam, that he's using some shady bank in Chinatown that's you know open to all and is willing to process any transactions. Even a very shady bank, you feel, would be com compliant with these regulations. I imagine most banks would turn him down, but let's say it was a shady bank. And indeed, it did take a while to get a response because normally they're quite quick when they're banning Josh. But this one was slow, so maybe they were a shady bank. But, you know, there's shady and there, there's stuff you just can't deal with, you know. And and I don't think that he's going to be able to keep an account even with a super shady bank for very long. Wow. But, I mean, if you look at it, and again, I've sent you, you an example. He's been getting banned for child porn for the last five years, yeah? Don't have to take my word for it. I've already just sent you what the French guy said. Now, yes. do you have a moment to look at the terms of service of Nine Chan? Um, sorry, I'm just like I don't like to touch Josh's stuff because you know another thing that he got in trouble for before he had malware on there. And if you visited his sites, it would mine crypto without telling you. It, it, yeah, they were mining Monero because Monero you can mine with JavaScript. So they had it in the browser, and then he got flagged as malware. So then he kind of tried to. He was using CoinHive. So then he tried to kind of tell people, but it's too late. Um, he was quite obsessed. I went through the source code of it, and he was like, he had little, little comments like, maniacal, ha, 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 fuck you, Sam Smith. That's how obsessed he is with me. <laughs> but 9chan's <laughs> relatively new, isn't it, Sam? Sorry, well, I was I talking about Kiwi Farms. 
Oh, no, but, I, but, but with Nine, uh, with Nine Chan itself, it's a relatively new enterprise, but it seems to be run the same way or even worse than Kiwi Farms has run. You go down the terms and it starts off, you know, fairly reasonably. Child pornography, don't post child pornography. That's fine. You know, no one would disagree with that. Then it comes down to section two, simulations of child pornography. Now, we have to understand that simulations of child pornography are illegal in um, the UK, the US and Europe, just as much as child pornography is. Yeah. But then, right, the second um, sentence, the second um, sort of paragraph under that section, he says, the law has exemptions which are recognised by the service and described in a following section for board owners. Users are reminded that they are solely liable for what they post and if the US government views their content as violations of the law, and he's cited 47 US Code 230. Now, I want to flag that up because he's saying, you know, there are some exemptions for, for simulated child porn, yeah? And he's saying that he's in the free and clear because of Section 230, yeah? yeah? And that is absolute lies. Section 230 does not affect the criminal law. It has no effect on laws about child porn. Um, you know, you might have an excuse if you didn't know about it, but if you know about it, you know, the fact someone else posted it is no defence, yeah? Okay. Sure. So that is a flat-out lie. So let's go down, or he's just stupid and doesn't realise it doesn't apply to, you know, the, the criminal law. But then we go down to this section a little bit below, and it says Lolicon Shotokon. Simulations of child pornography are illegal. However, in the interest of artistic pursuits allowed per section, section A to B, we will tolerate what is known as Lolicon or Shotokon with the following expectations. And then he says that they have to be kind of siloed into to Japanese-style boards. And... The thing about this section is it's, it's rubbish. Um, you know, simulations of child pornography are illegal and it stops there. There is a very limited exception for like ancient artwork and stuff. For, and if you look at the actual section of the US Penal Code for things of serious artistic importance. But if you've basically got a bunch of forums full of Japanese style cartoons, which I haven't visited, but which I hear are, you know, lots of Japanese style children, you know, being raped or whatever, then, or, or, or engaging in any sexual activity, really, that's just a felony. He just has a chan site, which is distributing illegal child pornography. It's as simple as that. And if you so take... in, your, in your own belief, Sam, do you believe that if Josh were to step on US soil or even like UK soil, that he could be arrested for this? Well, he should be arrested. Um, let's not beat around the bush. He should be arrested. Because even if no one has done it so far, he's said it's allowed. And therefore, if you like, he's at the very, very least, um, what is it, aiding, abetting, counselling or procuring? Because he's saying, yeah, you, know, you can host this here when it's illegal. And he, he's actually produced a link to the section of law, which he obviously hasn't read properly, but it's worth clicking yeah. through. Yeah, you so know, to, so just to clarify, right, simulations of child pornography are always illegal in the United States. <laughs> yeah, certain Go exceptions on. for like really artistic merit or ancient drawings. And so for him to host Lolly or Shotokan on his website, that's, you know, just base pornography with no real true artistic merit to it is a crime is what you're saying, because section two third only covers you from civil liability, not criminal liability. Yeah, it's right. the Communications Decency Act, section 230, but yeah, um, okay. it only covers civil liability, no exception for criminal law, particularly not sex crimes. Um, so, you know, don't get me wrong, if, if he was innocent, if he was generally banning all child pornography and someone sneaks them on, as they might do to try and sabotage him, he'd be in the clear. But if he's allowing it, which is what his rules say he does, no, he's liable. He's criminally liable. And, you know, if you actually click it, you just click through the law he's referencing. Um, it's got two limbs, and the first one says if it's a minor engaging in sexually explicit conduct and it's a cartoon a sculpture or a painting and it's obscene it's illegal and then there's a second thing which says if it's you know again it's much more detailed a minor engaging in i'm reading the law now quotes graphic bestiality sadistic or masochistic abuse or sexual intercourse including genital genital oral genital anal genital or oral anal whether between persons of the same or opposite sex and it lacks serious literary artistic political or scientific value so do you know what I mean? There's no ambiguity there. He's just hosting lots of illegal child porn. Well, I would like to just ask you, Sam, why do you think he's doing this? I have no idea. He seems to think he can get away with it. And so far, he's been proven right. I mean, he's got a lot away with a lot. I mean, he has had multiple hosts um, basically um, kick him off the child porn. But the FBI mm -hmm. hasn't kicked his doors in yet. Sam, do you have any reason to believe that Josh himself personally derives enjoyment from such photographs or such images? Or do yes. you think it, Yeah, okay. 
Um, what it is, is that he um, has admitted um, on Kiwi Farms, so it's not a fake, you know, it's not anyone messing about, he's admitted on Kiwi Farms that he did view um, Neko Shota, which is basically cartoon child porn involving young boys, a few years ago. And what had happened was he had years ago admitted it on Blockland, and people would take the mickey, but because what was posted on Blockland was based on RC log, you know, you could query the the authenticity of that. But then he admitted it while trying to minimise it on Kiwi Farms. He admitted that those quotes from him were real. He had viewed it when he was younger and he was trying to make out it was okay because he was the same age. Although that kind of falls a bit flat because he's now 27 and he's distributing it on, on an industrial scale. So, yeah. okay. Would you like to tell us then, Sam, uh, how he got arrested? Oh, yeah. So um, a few years back, he started up an email service called lolcow.email. And... Um, they started a thread for it where they all shared the, like, you know, scary messages they sent to people, you know, and these intimidating messages they were sending dick pics to finish that kind of thing. Don't get me wrong, I don't agree with these people, but you should be, you know, dealing with your problems with um, women by sending them, you know, penis photos. You should be, you know, you know that, that's creepy stalker stuff. And they were, of course, like the Kiwis do, all kind of enjoying it and, 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 and talking about how funny it was. And then um, someone started using the same service um, to send bomb threats and murder threats and all sorts of things. And then um, apparently, I don't know all the details, but there were some threats sent to schools near Josh. And the police arrested him. And um, it was the local sheriff's department arrested him. And they had to, you know, they, this was on Florida TV and everything. Um, but he got off and... One of the reasons he got off was apparently Randy Harper went to bat on his behalf. And as a consequence of that, they um, locked her thread. And there isn't really a Randy Harper thread now. It's not been active for a very long time. So this oh. this instance with Dick, the way he's locked Dick's thread and then you know redirected the discussion, this is just the tip of the iceberg. He has a past of modifying the site for people who does favors for him? Yes. Um, the two obvious examples. Um, as I said, years ago, he crossed... Um, uh, uh, a, a very interesting guy himself, a guy called Donnie Long. And Donnie got his revenge by creating a forum for stalking Josh's family. And, um, you know, it, it was called, uh, I think it was CandiceLimpodder.com or something. And um, it was named after Josh's mum. And it was just like, they found like the most obscure relatives and starting accusing them of, you know, of all these things. And um, Josh's family, you know, basically disowned him. And Josh, you know, begged Donnie to stop. And, and basically the deal they did was um, Donnie would try and, you know, get me in trouble. And he would also um, shut down the site. And in return, Josh shut down the thread. There was another guy as well who was associated with Donnie. Um, so, and again, that thread went away. So because Donnie had things against you, that made... Sorry. Well, no, what it was was... Um, I've been running for several years a little kind of group of people that's been trying to shut down Josh. Mm -hmm. And for a brief period, um, Donnie and one of um, Donnie's friends were, were on the list, although I didn't know who Donnie was. He was using a pseudonym. And they set up this guy, and I said, this guy's. Um, but they did. And um, then Josh's deal with them was basically they would leak all the stuff from the kind of anti-Josh mailing list. And yeah, in exchange, he deleted both their threads. Wow. Or okay. I mean, but I mean, they're not so, available. They're either hidden or deleted, and have been for some years now. So it's very clear that if you're willing to do favors for him or dirty work for him, he's willing to do things for you. Now, let's say that Dick Masterson was to delist Josh from New Project Two. Do you think the Dax would have anything to fear from uh, Josh in retaliation? Once that relationship was over he basically will be at the mercy of Josh. And that depends how Josh feels. I mean, Josh might feel, well, you know, Dick's my buddy, but he's had to kick me out. Or Josh might be vindictive, but you never know. Yeah. You never know. Josh isn't the most stable of people. Who knows how he might respond? Yeah. Can I, I just I mean, ask you yeah. this question then, Sam? Um, <clears throat> just to bring it back to what, what you call the dregosphere, you know, your pet name for the embarrassing fringe of the right, of the right, you know, that associate with uh, Josh and, and Ethan Ralph there. And I just wanted to ask what your impression of somebody like Ethan Ralph was. Um, Ethan, I don't want to be too harsh. Um, he has been associated with Josh for some years. I mean, Josh wrote an article about me trying to blame me for various things um, a few years ago, I think 2016, and he hosted that on the Ralph Retort. So he's clearly been associated with Josh for some time. I don't have the same kind of problem because he's not hosting the illegal content. He's not, you know, backing terrorism. He's not usually sort of harassing the very vulnerable, whereas Josh kind of picks 
first on the very weakest. Mm. You know, it's not celebs that Josh goes after. Josh goes after, you know, some random he's found on wrong planet. Do you know what I mean? I just find Ralph very distasteful. And he's not somebody you would associate with, probably, but he doesn't rise to the same level of criminal behavior as you're saying Josh does, right? Yeah, he's just like a bit, I don't know what you mean, crass or gauche, but he's not illegal. Dick Masterson isn't illegal, except, you know, funding Josh. I mean, we've got several problems with Josh. We, we, we've covered the child porn. Obviously, there's a terrorism. I mean, you know that members of Kiwi Farms have been involved in several shootings, not just um, Brendan Tarrant. And one of them had actually spoken to Josh about school shootings about three days before he did one. Um, there was a guy called William Atchison um, who went up and shot up a school in um, Aztec, New Mexico. And he had an account on Kiwi Farms under the kind of um, name Fuck You. That was his account name. And he had actually been chatting to Josh about school shootings like uh, three days before he walked into his old school and, and opened fire. And so Josh has been linked to, you know, several events involving school shootings. And, you know, he used to try and blame me, but he eventually gave in and he just like admits he's distributing, you know, and there's a moss shooting with Brenton Tower. Yeah. It's the same thing. Well, in your own belief, Sam, why do you think that Josh is in Serbia at the moment? Is he in Serbia? I mean, you see these rumours. <laughs> he's, he's, I know that his, he used to live with his mum and that was a, a Don Janiel Road in Florida. But she's moved because the police actually visited there to see if they could find Josh. And um, they found that the, the house was up for sale and it was empty. And Josh has long, you know, parted company with his mother. Um, and so Josh is somewhere that's not his mother's house. But I, I'm very distrustful of this kind of, you know, bit line of information that comes out of the Kiwis because they're quite possibly lying. I mean, I suspected he might be in New York because I think they're doing street college or something there. Um, so he might still be in some part of the United States, but he may also be in Serbia. I don't know. So, I mean, Josh isn't to be arrested on site by the authorities then? Well, um, it, it shocks me actually how much he's got away with because I think once you start openly allowing distribution of illegal child porn, you know, and, and multiple hosts are kicking you off, and saying, look, hang on, you know, you can't do this. We found illegal stuff. Now, even the rules of his site say you're allowed to have this illegal stuff. I can't see how he's getting away with it. Actually, one of the things we're doing at the moment is we're going to have a massive go at the FBI um, about this. Because, you know, yes, America has strong free speech rules, but I don't really think they extend to this. And uh, I think the FBI's, you know, let it down there. And of course, one thing I want to mention, you know, Josh has started, a, or someone on 9chan, with Josh's as it were, permission has started a forum for stalking female legislators. No, I was not. No, All right. no. Whoa. So Nine Chan, there, there's a couple of particularly problematic, if you like, illegal sites um, coming up. There's um, Colfax, and what they do there is they keep a database of women who've had sex with non-Caucasians. So they they just stalk any random women they can find who's moderately attractive and has had sex with a with a, with a, uh, a non-Caucasian man. And you know they do the same kind of Kiwi thread only with more pictures because um, it's an image board. And then they've got this other board called Left Nudes, where they're basically, um, if you look at Left Nudes, it's basically, they make threads on female legislators like senators or House of Representatives in the United States or members of parliament in Britain. And then they have, um, you know, um, fake nudes and stories about murdering them and raping them and raping their children. And so obviously that's made a lot of very powerful people upset with Josh. And then, you know, he's also got New Zealand where they kind of taunt Jacinda Ardern, the prime minister of New Zealand, and, you know, and, and have their discussions about how great, you know, they think Brenton Tarrant is. And then they've got, you know, um, they've got a thread for her on left nudes with a story about murdering her 18 month old daughter with a, a cheese grater. Um, uh, and, you know, Obviously, this stuff isn't nice because you know that revenge porn is illegal in about 46 of 52 US states now, I think. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you look at left nude, so it's not illegal to have adult um, pictures, it's illegal to distribute them. But if you look at left nudes, you know, it's full of, you know, senators and stuff. And, you know, obviously they're not very happy. Um, and I know here in the UK, I have in writing from the parliamentary police that they are now investigating um, uh, well, key Phillips, and Nine Chen. Is it? Is it something to do with Jess Phillips, right? Well, not just her. They've put a few um, British MPs or their families on this site. Jess Phillips is one of them. The reason Jess Phillips is significant is because the week they yeah. set it all up, she reported to police she, she'd seen this site because someone had emailed it to her or something. Um, I'm not quite sure how she found out. But she had had a break-in attempt to the garage of her home, and then someone on Left News posted that they were taking responsibility. Right, right. I mean... What, what I want to ask Sam is, I mean, uh, I, I, it's hard to imagine that 
Dick Masterson would be fully ignorant of all of this um, and still do business with him. I mean, why would you, what would you speculate? Why would somebody like Dax Herrera associate and risk his business for this guy? I mean, I don't think he, either he's dumb as a sack of hammers or he hasn't looked at what Josh is actually hosting and what Josh has done over the years. Because he strikes me as a busy guy. He's got a big income that he can spend on, you know, you know, cars, female attention, whatever he happens to want. And maybe detailed research on Josh's background hasn't been a key thing for him. And I think, you know, he's going to have that shoved in his face because, you know, he thinks it's just a few nasty throws on Kiwi farms, and it goes so far beyond that. I mean, you also said that Josh was the first and only person, I believe, ever banned from Patreon. Could you just elaborate on that? Yes. I don't know of anyone that's yeah. banned from Patreon. Yeah, so Patreon um, was a payment site that was set up by a guy called Cody Wilson. Have you heard of Cody Wilson? Well, he, he was the CEO of a firm called Ghost Gunner. And what Ghost Gunner is, you know 3D printers? What he did was he designed some guns that would work effectively when printed out on a 3d printer so what ghost gunner would do is basically you you download a bar from them and they would print out a gun on your 3d printer and of course that was very controversial but then he then decided to set up a thing called hatred which was intended to be a payment platform for for you know creators who are like nazis and real extremists and in fairness i actually thought that wasn't something that should be shut down. I don't approve of those people, but I don't see if they're not illegal that they should have their payment shut down. But then Josh was banned because of Josh's revolting paedophilia, basically. I mean, I had a kind of back and forth with Cody Wilson, and what seems to have decided him, I sent him a link to um, another chan site, Josh Eustro, called 16chan, which is now closed down. And that had a board called File, where they would allow any paedophile material that wasn't illegal, so basically stories, and they had some particularly graphic child rape stories on there. And just just to avoid confusion, 16 Chan, the name was, for whatever reason, released by Josh, and someone else has it now. So the current 16 Chan, nothing to do with Josh, don't hassle them. But 16 Chan a few years ago was run by Josh. It was an earlier attempt at kind of his Infinity Next that he's got on 9 Chan. And he had a board there called File. Uh, I've got some archive links to it. Um, again, it's stories about raping children to death. Um, and the particular story that horrified Cody Wilson was a story in which um, some guy called Big J... Um, abducts a five-year-old, I think it's somewhere in South America or somewhere like that, and Big J, you know, gets out his knives, straps the toddler down, cuts a hole in them and has sex with the wound and until the child dies. And um, that was the kind of material that Josh would host on 16chan. And of course, that's technically not illegal, but it horrified Cody Wilson. The effect, you know, the Nazis were like, guys, this is too degenerate. We're not having you. And Josh was banned from hatred, the only person ever banned from hatred. So what do you think to Josh's defence whenever he's confronted with this by saying he's an advocate for free speech? Well... I'm an advocate for free speech. I'm a conservative. I don't think Milo should have been banned. I, I think that Lauren Southern should have not been banned from the UK. I don't necessarily agree with everything that Lauren Southern says. I, Milo's a nice guy. I don't agree with everything he says. But I think they should be allowed on Twitter, allowed on payment services, allowed into this country. And, um, you know, I'm for free legal speech. I'm not in favour of industrial distribution of child porn. I'm not in favour of shooting up public buildings. And I'm against stalking members of parliament and senators and congresswomen with um, revenge porn. Um, and, you know, I don't think that those things are free speech. I think they're crimes in Britain and Europe. And I think, you know, it's not unreasonable for revenge porn to be a crime. I don't think it's unreasonable for child porn to be a crime. And I don't think it's unreasonable for shooting people to be a crime. You know? So what's the end point with your, I, I hesitate to call it a relationship with, with Josh. What's the end point? Do you want to see him face justice? Well, I would like him to be arrested for distributing child pornography. Um, and for you know his involvement in terrorism i think it's a shame that he hasn't been arrested for stalking he stalked some very vulnerable people there have been some suicides of course as you know um of, of some very vulnerable young women who have barely you know adult themselves um there was julie terry berry we were very very sad um she published some unwise things online and josh and his friends um not only did they stalk her until she killed herself but after she killed herself they continued to post her nudes got a dump of her facebook friends and made sure her family knew about her threat right so yeah um they're not nice people i mean th th this isn't you know well, uh, it's not like when i it, spoke to josh last week and i mentioned to him that people on kiwi farms tend to kill themselves um, do you want to know what the reaction of josh was it wouldn't surprise me. Go on. It was laughter, just maniacal laughter, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's that's exactly like Josh. I mean, he, he he's 
he comes across to me as it reminds me of um i don't know if you're aware but i did my um law master's on, on mental health i've done a lot of work for vulnerable people he comes across to me as a psychopath i mean i don't mean that casually i mean you know clinically he he, he seems to lack empathy he's impulsive he 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 doesn't realize when he steps so far over the line there's going to be consequences and so this, are you almost sympathetic to josh then in that way knowing no, that you've got this medical background insane. right i think he's seriously dangerously insane there's been a number of deaths associated with him and he is currently you know intent on causing as much disruption as possible um of course there was the attack on the world health organization did i mention that um no the reason, no, no. The, reason the reason he got banned from twitter recently he had this account and we kind of periodically me and my colleagues get him banned from twitter usually we wait till he gets a following so it hurts more but um the particular thing that got him banned was he had posted and um people on 9chan were sharing hacked details from the world health organization i don't think it's a very high quality hack but they were distributing on 9chan for the purpose of kind of disrupting world health organizers activities because they think that um you know coronavirus is good because it kills non-caucasians they want to kill you know members of ethnic minorities and josh was gloating about this I, i've got an archive of the tweet and um of course um so when we got in touch with Twitter, I mean, Twitter are assholes, but they banned him for that. I mean, you know, you can get away with an awful lot of Twitter, but terrorist attacks on the World Health Organization, whilst there's a pandemic on, they banned him for that. It just goes on and on and on. Yeah, yeah, I can send you links to prove all this. I mean, I'm not, you know, I've got, like, anything that I can legally send you, I will. I mean, um, you know. The, well, the in your own assessment, being, I mean, a mental health professional from the sounds of it, certainly well, having considerable I experience. On, I did my dissertation on mental health. I've done some charity work. I wouldn't call myself a mental health professional. That's not I've got considerable oh, experience, I would say. More yeah. so than I have, <laughs> definitely. Um, so in your experience, would you say that he is maybe prone to an early premature death? Do you reckon he's either going to suicide or? Well, he's obviously, as you're aware, um talked about going on a shooting spree um he said he was wanted to kill everyone with a vagina at one stage that's a real quote that was um from blockland encyclopedia dramatica picked up but it is real and i have seen the source so it's not made up and so yes um, um it, you know he is just, he is just quite to, dangerous just to clarify he said he wanted to kill every single person with a vagina well no he said he wanted to kill all fucking cunts with a vagina but i was uh. you know Turning it down. Um, yeah, so why do you think that Josh is so ingratiated with these uh, e celebrities? Why do you think that he's often on these streams like the Kill Stream? He's often on Dick Masterson's show. You know, he's, he's, he gets about. Do you think that they use him as protection? Do you reckon they're fearful of him on the forum? Or is there something else? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's quite obvious that Ethan would like, I think you did an analysis of a discussion between them, didn't you? And it's quite obvious Ethan would like his thread deleted, which is quite understandable because, you know, Ethan doesn't deserve to be stalked. However much, you know, I think he's crass. He doesn't deserve it any more than anyone else does. And, and Dick is, you know, obviously quite upset about his thread as well. Because, I, I mean, I know for a fact that Josh has been on Dick's program 11 times, which is, you know, more, more you know, than... One of them got his mum fired um or contributed to it um it was one of the earlier ones he gave um he, he was being interviewed and he talked about the time someone went to his door um to remonstrate with his mum and say you know kiwi farms is horrible can you shut it down that was back when josh lived with his mum and josh and the person who came to the door was a transgender person who was a you know quite a tall I think maybe been in the military before transitioning. So he had this, you know, trans woman come to the door. And Josh, in his intro interview with Masterson, quoted his mum as, you know, making some really horrible comment, like, you know, that's the ugliest lesbian I ever saw. And then people who complained, complained to his mum's employer. And that was about the time she lost her job. What, what I hear happen is when they were living together, people started harassing her employer. I mean, I named them, but I didn't do anything illegal. I put them in articles and stuff. But some people went beyond that and apparently, you know, started harassing um, this estate agent where she worked. I think you call it real estate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, um, Keller Williams. And um, Josh complained. He, he alleged all sorts of nasty emails have been sent and things and phone calls and the FBI are investigating. I don't know how much of that is true, but certainly I know because I was copied in, some people sent emails saying she was supporting his forum. And the Dick Masters interview was one thing that they, pardon me, hiccups lied on. Um, mm. You know, that he had quoted her as making these quite virulently, you know, homophobic and transphobic remarks. And, you know, whatever you think of that, the estate agent probably wasn't best pleased. 
This is a question I've had just because I've heard it, and I, I'm not sure if it's true. Did Josh's mother have an account on Kiwi Farms? So there was an account in her name, and it was there for a long time and not deleted. Um, and it was used as evidence against her with her employers. However, Josh denies it and says she was framed and said that someone, you know, created it and he didn't notice. So, you know, we may never know. It, okay. it wasn't active. Um, so he, she may have been fitted up. Um, I kind of lean to, you know, actually the view that maybe she was like arm twisted into having one created and then never posted. And that's why Josh didn't delete it. But then, you know, we'll never know the truth. But I suspect it was real, but I can't prove it. Um, okay. You know, Sam, I just want to bring things back to New Project 2 for a second. Now, I've heard the figure that per every transaction that is fraudulent, say, that doesn't comply with the rules by the financial authorities, that Dick Masterson is liable for 10 grand. Visa and Mastercard do have um, rules which allow um, acquiring banks to be fined, and there are, I think, reciprocal rules for the bank to fine um, Dick Masterson. Whether they do and to what extent they deem transactions illegal is for them. I mean, they might just kick him. Um, that's what the previous one did. Certainly, Visa can fine the bank 10 grand uh, a pop for illegal transactions once they've been notified. Something like that. It's in the rules. I looked them up before because I was uh, a couple of years ago, the first time I got in banned when it was lolcow.us. I can't remember the exact figure. But it is something like that. But they may well not. They tend to just kick people off. Do you know what I mean? Right. So Madison hasn't been fined, in your own opinion? Well, he wasn't fined last time. He certainly didn't mention it. He just said they shit canned him without any reason. That that was... Right. Uh, do you know what I mean? Um, well, it strikes um, me that you can't like keep doing this, right? You can't keep finding a bank and then having them kick you off. Because that would not. be fraudulent, wouldn't it? Well, no. I mean, it's just that he won't be able to because he'll get on more and more financial blackness. And as I said, if he carries on, there is a real risk. His checking account will be closed one day. His, his you know, payment cards will go and he'll find it very difficult to operate, uh, you know, any sort of employment, which is why, you know, most people try to avoid being linked to crimes. And it goes back to this thing. Kiwi Farms does illegal things, yeah? Dick doesn't usually accept, obviously, new Project 2's compliance issues. Ethan doesn't usually accept, you know, that one time he got arrested for assaulting a police officer. But everything about Kiwi Farms is illegal. And every time it sneaks well, back into the final, it gets kicked off. During his lawsuit with Maddox, Dick Masterson used screenshots from Kiwi Farms in that case. And? That's not illegal. That's not illegal. So, I mean, content on... So all content from Kiwi Farms isn't necessarily falling under the umbrella of illegality. Well, let me put it another way. Owning, you know, downloading it, looking at it in your browser, putting it into an exhibit, that's not illegal. But the operation of the site where, you know, there's stalking going on, where there's terrorism, where, you know, particularly 9chan with child pornography, yeah, it's, it's illegal to operate 9chan. It's not necessarily illegal to, to, to screenshot a 9chan post and put it in a court document. What about uh, to, like, post and engage actively? in the activities of the site, you know? Well, look, most jurisdictions, what Kiwi Farms done, it does is stalking. I mean, if it was in the UK, they'd just arrest Josh tomorrow, um, <clears throat> um, even before the thing with stalking the members of parliament. But, you know, uh, um, you know, they, they did at one stage arrest him in Florida, um, and Randy Harper some, somehow persuaded the um, sheriff it was free speech, and then, of course, now Josh is at an unknown location. You know, but if you take part, I mean, there are people who will get arrested because, you know, um, particularly the European people, if they get caught, you know, it's a stalking site with links to terrorism. You're going on a watch list. You know, if you donated to Mad at the Internet, that list has probably already been reported to the authorities by the bank. If you put your credit card into Mad at the Internet, you know, the FBI probably have it and they're probably parceling out the numbers to, you know, the European and, and, and UK people. Wow. So, Sam, just, I mean, this might be a very personal question, but how has... Josh hosting a thread on you on Kiwi Farms affected your life? Well, it hasn't had too much effect except for when they've actually, like, you know, attempted to frame me for bomb threats and when they've, you know, been sending out, you know, emails in my name trying to persuade people I'm going to blow things up. Um, but I've actually benefited it from it uh, in a small way now because Josh has made so many insane attempts to get me in trouble. Eventually, the local police had to make a marker, which means on my address, which says, you know, various things. And as well, I can never be investigated for anything almost now. And also, you know, um, you have the IRS 
Yes. Well, Josh tried to get me into trouble with the British RS, which is called Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs. So eventually they put yeah. a note on my file saying there's, you know, these loony terrorist stalkers who are trying to get in. Um, and you can't investigate him without permission from special office. And, you know, they will, they basically said if they get one they think is Kiwi Farms, they'll refer it to the police. Well, I mean, what was the issue with HMRC? That... Well, they got this weird idea I hadn't filed, because I own a company that I hadn't filed some document that I needed to. And I think the, the, the basic issue was that I'm exempt because it's not, you know, that big a company. And um, so they kept putting these rubbish reports that I was under filing taxes. And of course, what I say online is true. I mean, I think one year I put my income down as 72 grand. Well, I did a few years ago. I am more than that now, um, except for the COVID lockdown, when obviously everything's frozen or all on holiday. But, you know, a few years ago, that's how much I earned. And I posted it, I think, on a wiki or somewhere, yeah? And he sure. asked some question. And Josh would not believe it. So he and his friends all reported me to the Her Majesty's Inland Revenue. And so I explained to Her Majesty's, because obviously I had reported the correct amount, um, Her Majesty's Inland Revenue, that this was just, you know, this Kiwi Farms thing, and, you know, it was illegal and all that. And they looked at it, and they put a special note on my file to the effect that, um, you know, these terrorists were trying to badmouth me. And so now any consideration of investigation has to be considered against this, and anyone they think is from Kiwi Farms will just be referred to the police. So, if right, you bring... so, I mean, you've not really been hurt personally by this, then? Well, it's been very upsetting at times, particularly yeah. at first. But, you know, in the end... I'm still here, you know, I'm yeah. still fine, and Josh has had to flee to an unknown location and, and, and is nearly destitute. Well, that's a fair point. Um, in your estimation, could Josh ever step foot, say, in England? It's a complex issue. I think particularly at the moment, now he started stalking members of, like, the government. Um, probably not the best plan. I mean, you probably have to nag some dumb, you know, local police officer. Obviously, Nine Chan and Kiwi Farms, it, 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 you know, it's gone from being shitposting to stalking to terrorism. I mean, sure. they terrorism in multiple countries, you know. The, the, so, the, I mean, it's, Sam, at what point do Interpol get involved? At what point does an international arrest warrant get uh, issued? I don't know. I don't know what it um, takes. And they're not going to tell us if they do, are they? They're going to, um, <laughs> we're, we're going to read about it, it you know. One day, Kiwi Farms will either disappear or there'll be that FBI sees thing, particularly on Nine Chan, I think. Well, Josh has often alluded to plans he's got for Kiwi Farms after he's like dead or kidnapped or, or, or arrested. And all of these plans involve Kiwi Farms continuing. Kiwi Farms hasn't done Josh much good, has it? Um, and, you know, there was a site I like to compare Josh to a few years ago called Is Anyone Up, which is a revenge porn site. Um, back when it was less illegal and people would post, you know, nudes of their exes or whatever on there. And they used to, like, talk tough until they went to prison and part of the plea deal was they shut it down. And I suspect that if Josh gets arrested, which is becoming more and more likely um, for a number of reasons, um, that, you know, the police are going to say, you know, it will affect your sentence if this site continues. Right. But if Josh yeah. just shut down the site today and stopped 9chan today... Is he away scot-free? Is he clean? Or does Not he have to, to face us. justice? We won't know what's going on. We do know that they ha he has, as you know, royally, you know, stuck his middle finger up at New Zealand. You know about that. Sure. Um, we do know he's been stalking a bunch of legislators. And we do know that he's banned from a load of financial services. So the thing is, the FBI won't tell you when they're investigating. But mm. they have had pissed off phone calls from New Zealanders. They've had pissed off phone calls from presumably the UK police. And, you know, who knows what they're doing? They could be, you know, there could be a, a party van with blacked out windows outside Josh's house as we speak. You know, we won't know. It's like when they seize that drugs market, you know, um, Hansel market, you know, that had the little boat. And then the police seized it and they actually had commissioned a picture of the boat sinking, which I thought was very funny. Um, and, you know, all the people who went there to buy their drugs found this picture of a boat sinking saying, ha, we've run your website for the last month. Um, and, you know, for all you know. Josh could one day find himself in custody and the police could just keep Kiwi Farms running and collect all the use details like the drug markets. And particularly with the child porn stuff, um, as I said, 9chan. And also, um, obviously, um, what was the other thing? You know, if you're typing in credit card numbers and they're going to the financial system, there is a list somewhere in the financial system of people who donated to Mad at the Internet. Um, Would you be surprised if Josh were a federal informant and passing on user data to the federal authorities? It would surprise me if they were letting him get away with this much. I mean, it really would, because, you know, 
it is one thing to run a ship posting site. I mean, let me put it another way. Let's compare 8CUN and 9chan, yeah? 8CUN allows a lot, but it won't allow anything illegal, yeah? It will not, yeah? And the guy who owns 8CUN, Jim Watkins, is a kind of nice guy. He's an old, um, you know, ex-military, really believes in free speech, um, and kind of tolerates people he disagrees with. But ultimately, he would cooperate with the feds. And that's, you know, after the shootings and, and Brenton Tarrant and all that, he went along to the um, to, to the Homeland Security people. And even the Democrats on the House, you know, Homeland Security Committee, were happy with him and thanked him for his help, even the Democrats. Um, so, you know, you can see him cooperating. Josh, I'm not so sure. And even if he was an informant, I can't see the feds tolerating him stalking senators and, and House representatives. I just can't see that happening, not unless they want to be ex-agents. Mm-hmm. So, so Watkins doesn't tolerate any lolly or shot a, shot a con on his. I don't think any more. I mean, I think what happened was when it was started up by Frederick Brennan. Of course, the laws changed over the years. Frederick Brennan, you know, had quite open house, but then they got kicked off for it, off various financial things. And Jim Watkins took over and kind of cleaned it up. Um, he would say, "If it's illegal in the United States, it's not allowed on my board." Um, I think Watkins can be credited for cleaning up 8chan and, and, and 8 can and cooperating with the authorities, to be honest. Um, and one of the reasons they parted company with Josh is, of course, he failed to upgrade their site. Yeah, I mean, Infinity Next wasn't very good, and as you say, it's not very good now. And um, there are rumours he was involved in um, allowing or, 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 or something to do with the child pornography that had been a problem on 8chan. And, of course, when Josh went, so did a lot of their porn problem. Now, there are rumours, Sam, that you've set up a bounty on Josh's head or something, five grand. No, there's no rumour. Uh, a few years ago, I sued a associated with Josh called Dynastia on a John right. Doe basis. Um, and I got permission from a high court judge here in Britain to serve by email. So I served in the court papers by email and he didn't reply. And a few months later, the court granted um, judgment, if you like, in de- default at a court hearing. Okay. and summary disposition. And so this order against this anonymous person called Kiwi Dynastia. Now, if he is unmasked ever, I can then enforce the judgment against him and get my 10 grand. So what I've said is, if any Kiwi out there has Dynastia's real identity and can prove he's the Dynastia who posted the things I sued him for, then I will share half of whatever I recover after expenses with them. So if I, so I think the debt now is 13 grand, of course, interest is payable. So okay. it's probably more than that now, it's like 15. So let's say I spend five grand suing Dynastia in Australia and I get his house is sold and I get 15 grand back, then I'll give half up to five grand to whoever shops him. Five grand in UK, I and mean, I don't know what's that, six grand in dollars, something like that. But that's not a fake bounty, it's not illegal. I've put it on my website, that's still open. Even if it goes over the six year time limit, time can be extended when this guy's hiding. So, you know, if I can recover money, I've said I will split half of it up to five grand of the profit with whoever shops um, Kiwi Dynastia. That's a real yeah. offer. Yeah, because I, a- I had seen a post, I think, last week from them saying that. You know, you had only made twelve thousand dollars last year, and of that, ten thousand was this unenforceable, uh, you know, judgment. Has they believe their own lies? Yeah. Um, I earned what I said. I earned um, seventy-two a few years ago. Whenever I posted that, um, I've earned significantly more than that in recent years, and I've declared it all. And if they believe that I'm only earning twelve grand, that's because they don't understand the accounts they're reading. I mean, there's one guy called Ginger Piglet who keeps telling them he's an attorney. And um, basically, he doesn't seem to be because he keeps getting his law wrong. Like he keeps thinking I have to file things that I don't. Um, and the police really want to talk to him because um, uh, he um, he and a guy called the Drivel Broadcast um, they had one of them, the Drivel Broadcast, to photograph my home and post it on Kiwi Farms, and the other one. Um, this ginger piglet had tried to contact my local council because, you know, years ago I was an elected councillor. I was a, yeah. a, a city councillor. And they contacted it to try and get minutes. And so they are suspected because there were some threats made to schools at about the same time that they were doing that. And also yeah. they're suspects um, for this um, uh, this attempted break in at Jess Phillips' home. So, you know, there's some police would really like to talk to those guys. But as for their estimates of my income, they have no idea what they're talking about. Yeah. So I, talking I... with um, people who are sort of invested in the law that Josh is associated to, what are your opinions on Nick Ricator? I don't know much about him, so I can't say much. Would you like to tell me a bit about him? Uh, well, he's a lawyer that Josh seems to be entwined with. 
Well, I don't know how much, because uh, I'd be very surprised if um, any lawyer fully informed of Josh's activities wanted to be, you know. Yeah, they might, this, they might... uh, this man, uh, Nick Ricada, is a member of New Project 2. He receives something like $1,000 a month through it. But the connection to Josh that I know personally, there was going to be a fight between me and Ethan Ralph, and Josh had contacted Ricada as the third-party lawyer to be an escrow. So that's that's pretty much the the extent I think of their relationship. Their well, and also together. Josh is frequently on Ricardo's show. It's true. Yeah, he's been on the program probably a half dozen times. At least. Well, I suspect Ricardo probably doesn't know all the stuff that Josh is doing because um, if he did. He wouldn't be talking. Josh wouldn't be talking this much rubbish. I mean, I'm pretty sure that he doesn't have anything to do with nine chan rules because any real lawyer would have known, of course, that um, Section 230 has no effect on criminal law. So all this rubbish about immunity. Yes, you might be immune from a defamation lawsuit or a civil suit, but there is no immunity under 230 for child porn. Yes. Remember though that this is a lawyer who's never made one legal prediction correct and has never actually won any of the cases he represents as an internet lawyer, so... I know nothing <laughs> about the guy. I don't want to badmouth this poor guy. Yeah, he may have had Josh on his show, but he may well not know about it, because if I was, you know, even if this guy was shady, which we have no evidence he is, you know, out of self-preservation, he distanced himself, if he had a full picture, I think. All right, Sam. Um, <clears throat> thank you for providing, you know, great answers to these questions that we've been asking. And I feel as though uh, it's not only been, like, revelatory... But it's been a very constructive exploration of not just New Project 2, but the cast of characters associated with it. So thank you. Yeah, we really appreciate it.